In the previous video we managed to confirm that the entry-level GCN cards are capable of fitting above 60 FPS at at least 720 resolution. This ended up setting up my expectations for what used to be the mid-range Radeon cards from the GCN architecture. The R7 260 from ASUS with its DirectX 12 capable Bonaire GPU. MSI's OCV1 version of the R7 260X using the XTX version of the same GCN 2.0 GPU. Sapphire's R7-265, the only card in the video that uses the GCN 1.0 GPU, and also the only one here that enjoys a 256-bit memory interface. As usual, we'll have these cards running in the same HP Z230 workstation, featuring an i7-4770 equivalent Xeon, and 32GB DDR3 RAM clocked at 1600 MHz and running in dual channel. As usual with these videos, the test consists of a bot match played in Deer Dust 2, and we start off with 1080 resolution and low settings, 100% render scale. I expected the 260 to provide the lowest average and the 265 to be the fastest, and while the latter is true, we can't really say the same thing about the former. This may very well be due to differences between runs though, so don't be too quick to assume that the R7 to 60X is the weakest of them. However, numbers are numbers, and the R7 260 did manage 89 FPS on average and 61 FPS 41% lows, proving that 1GB of VRAM is just fine, even in 2023. Despite its 2GB of RAM, the 260X scored only 72 on average, with 1% lows in the high 50s. As for the R7 265, that one managed 101 FPS on average and 53 41% lows. I have no problem playing the game at the settings with any of these cards, but if more FPS are needed, then maybe 720 resolution would help. Ok, same settings like before, except the resolution, and lo and behold, the cards now line up as expected in the performance graph. The average for all three cards is above 100 FPS, and two of them have their 1% lows well above 60. The R7-260 averaged 109 and had 1% lows in the low 50s. The R7-260X provided 130 FPS for the average and 1% lows in the high 80s. And the R7-265 averaged 144 FPS and 95 41% lows. Even more than the 1080 resolution runs, the game plays just fine and I can't really fault the graphics card for me not being able to point a freaking cursor at the enemy team. In the first video of the series, we already mentioned that the 1GB VRAM and shader model 5.0 requirements are too vague, and we pointed out that there is also a floating point performance threshold that needs to be met. And while the GCN entry level cards can play the game at 720 resolution, it takes at least the 768 shaders of the Bonaire GPU to do the same at 1080. As for the higher end GCN cards, those are yet to be revisited for this year. However, they will feature CS2 results. Make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out. Hopefully, these last three videos managed to clear things a bit in terms of actual minimum requirements to play the game. If you missed out one of the previous two, well, feel free to check them out, they are just one click away. Literally. As for this video and mini series, well, we're done. Thank you for watching and I'll see you